All right. It's Gundam time. We are on episode 18 of Gundam. And um, we saw the divorce scene. That's that's where we're at. We saw Suleta and Miodine get divorced, essentially. And um, I'm going to refer you, if you're watching this, to another video that I've surely published before this one in which I'm reading the um, short story about um, Ariel and Suleta and that sort of thing. Because in that video, I talked a lot about this whole move forward gain two and Suleta's schemas and, and why the divorce is such a problem for her and how it's like shattering to her worldview and that sort of stuff. I'm not going to relitigate that because it's in that video. And the people watching the stream have just t heard me talk about it for like two and a half hours. So um, go check it out if you have missed it, because it has a lot to do with why this is so devastating to Suleta and uh, how this is going to reformat her expectations about what she can and cannot um, do with this mantra, move forward, gain two. So I'm very curious to see how this shakes out. Can you get divorced before you get married? Technically not, I guess. I guess you're right. Yeah, and I, f I famously claimed that the last episode was a, a W for Suleta. I, Suleta getting her heart broken is a good thing in Euro Brady's book because this is her crisis point, right? And, and she needs to have gone through a genuine crisis to learn how to regulate that crisis. You know, I always say I'm more concerned about the person who's not in any level of crisis and intellectualizes their problems too much because they've not crossed the boundary of true psychological work that would allow them to deal with the next crisis. That's right. I love hands, heartbreak, and dead dogs. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's new Brady lore. Because when we were watching 86 and they did something, I was, I was not as shaken by that scene as people would have wanted. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's hop in. I'm curious to see where this goes. Not a Gundam. あらゆるシステム管理や制御を担っているといえる。はい。ノノレールとかにも使われてますか？そう。学園内交通の各車両と総合運転指令をつなぐのもアーメットリンクで。Suleta in school. This is the only time we've ever seen them in actual class. <laughs> Seriously, this is the only time. She is. She's intellectualizing. She's she's offloading the emotional processing by like throwing herself into into something that she can intellectualize, basically. Yeah, there's no more duels to do, so she's back in class. <laughs> she's coping essentially. LP Oh my god, seeing her have to pilot like a not Gundam. It's a little awkward. Suleta almost ラノードルのトッピングマシマシにしてみました。いただきます。ああ。なあ、スレッタ。今日のお授業中さ。かっこよかったですか？え？授業中かっこよく先生に質問する。授業中かっこよく先生に質問する。授業中かっこよく先生
yeah, this is this is this is an attempt to fill in those missing sort of schemas. In some ways, this is probably what Miodine had in mind, which was like if she can focus less on the dueling, then maybe she'll actually get to cross off some of these things, right? Because she could she could recognize that you know being the holder was kind of dominating her life in a lot of ways. Yeah, I'm actually curious to see what was on the phone as well. Go shopping with friends. Celebrate a birthday party with friends. That's the one she hasn't done. Raise hand in class in a cool way. Okay, so this is the one she hasn't done is celebrate a birthday party. Yeah, birthdays are a touchy subject for her. Buy and eat a snack after school. Meet up with friends to go to and from school. Eat lunch in the school cafeteria with friends. Yeah. And that's the trouble with someone who's had a uh, unstandard upbringing like Suleta, like not growing up with any other kids not growing up with peers, not growing up in a school setting, and she's missed out on all of this stuff. And so she's not had the natural like ability to develop all of those schemas, right? Those like behavioral building blocks. And so she's kind of speed running them, but that also makes her feel like, well, I'll never be a complete person until I check off everything on the list. Like it's a very holistic way to think about her psychosocial development which we don't have that feeling naturally where it's like you know if i didn't get this experience then i will feel like i um you know and am, am an incomplete person right maybe for like very big things if you're if you're the type of person who's like oh but i didn't get to have my first kiss in high school you know and it happened later or whatever then yeah that could be quite like distressing for you but the fact that they're so mundane from an observation point of view for Suleta, they're not mundane in a psychological sense because they are a part of the, the layers of schemas, right? These are at the surface level. It's like being able to sit at lunch with friends is a lot more about, am I capable of being accepted by others based solely on my personal qualities? Right. That's why she has things like to raise my hand and be and to be seen as cool, to eat lunch with people, right? Um, to celebrate a birthday. Th these are about like social acceptance because she's never known whether she was guaranteed that, right? She's not guaranteed any of those things. She's coming in late to social development. So it probably is even more distressing to know that there are things that she can't currently accomplish, like this birthday one. Oh my god, he's so gorgeous. He's like he's like one step away from having a turtleneck here with his new bob haircut. Beautiful boy. せないようでは勇士の話は無しだ。ビムジェタークの息子くん。ダメだ。勇士元はうなずかん。必要なのは俺の実績か。実績というなら本社には未発表の新型モビルスーツがあるはずでは。新型か。I've seen that as a Gunpla. It looks like it is a Gundam. Jisedai concept model, Shubaru Zette. Tosan ga kayatsu susumete ita to wa kiete ita nda ga. Anta, nani katsu ni Gundam no gizutsu o teikyo shite nno yo? Grill mo nande tamatte ta wake? Ore datte shiranokatta nda. Mada baishu sareru mae de shita shi. Zehi tomo drone jin yo issho ni. So, Bob 
has acquired Gundarm Inc. And now they're going into business together. It's pretty interesting. Who's going to pilot it? And can I get a plastic model of that? Fuck the backlog. Okay, one more is not going to hurt. ガンダムの技術は医療のために役立てるって決めたから。総裁選を勝つためにはありがとうございます。Good question. Man, Prospera is off the fucking chain. Oh, Gundarm acquired Shinsei, who made the aerial. That makes more sense. もう少し時間をください。ヘルツ分散の応用はあなたの専門だ。引き続きお願いします。このファイルのモビルスーツ一体何なんです？使用書の通りですよ。エアリアルのデータストームネットワークを拡張するモビルスーツ型ガンビット
what is also nice is the juxtaposition here between the show's handling of the bigger conflicts, right? Like the various companies and the world state. And then there's Prospera's level of this like very broad existential meaning. And then you have down to Suleta, who's like at a very granular level trying to fight for her own humanity and personal development. Like as as a story, it's handling scale, conflict scale very well for me. That that we get a break in pace from the world's gonna end, you know, like I don't think every story needs to be about that. In fact, the stories that are about like one person's struggle are often more grand scale from an emotional point of view. And the fact that the main character is the one that's sort of struggling with that, main character being Bob, uh, is is very evident that uh, the show's handling that very well. Also, Saleta's dealing with it too, I guess. <laughs> お前ムカついてねえのかよ。ミオリネに。あいつあんだけ嫌ってた親父の後継ぐんだろ。それでジェタークの<笑> いつまでここにいるつもりだ。てめえら。ミオリネもホルダーも今は全て兄さんのもんだ。お前はもういらないんだよ。空っぽの水星女。よほら、いいや。いや、what's レオユ。ありがとな。ああ。今それ関係ねえだろうが。ラウダさんの言う通りです。最初から私には何もなかったんです。なのにホルダーとか花婿とか。間違ってるって。So when we talk about schemas again, this is like how how they start to form, right? If anyone hadn't watched the um, video I last did, schemas are forming right now for Suleta, and they're interacting in in very negative ways with her already existing maladaptive schemas. Because, right, there are three types of schemas: the 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 self schemas about the self, others, and the world. Uh, there, are, there are many types of schemas, but these are the broadest categories. And and Suleta had some schemas about herself, right? I'm the groom. I'm the holder. And those interacted with schemas about other people, right? These things are a bond with Miorine. Right, and this bond with Miorine gave her a schema that she is loved. All of these things give her a sort of hope in in the world, like that she can make it in the world. The problem is now that she's not these things, right? Now that she's not the groom or the holder. She doesn't feel like this is there, so she doesn't feel loved, and her hope in the world is gone. So, like this is the this is the problem when when one of your schemas that's like very foundational gets disrupted, is it upsets all these other things. And sometimes schema therapy is about, you know, again working on like the, the rationality of those things. Like, is the fact that you're not the holder or the groom anymore? Does that really mean? that you're not still loved or that you shouldn't still have hope in the world 
No, because hope is not only built on the fact that you have this bond with Miodine, right? Your your hope in the world should also be built on lots of other things, like um, your morality, your belief in you know the goodness of other people. Um, it should be built on your self confidence, right? Th these all have a link, but. The, the problem is that in a very narrative sort of way, she's disfavored these elements. And so while it looks like this hope is gone because of all the other things, schema therapy is about trying to understand that, okay, just because you don't have these things anymore, we have to find other links that keep this schema from collapsing. And that would look like, you know, trying to explore some of these things in broader dimensions than just her relationship with Miodine. So again, my therapy uh, process is quite confrontational because I will try to engage someone with that idea that they are wrong for thinking that this is gone. You know, I think there's, there's a, a certain incentive as a therapist to just empathize with someone and say like, you know, it really seems like you're losing your hope and your faith in the world. And, and I'm sorry that you're going through that. And let me just empathize with you and, you know, try to help you repair these things or repair this thing. It's like, no, I'm going to try to convince you that you're wrong. I'm going to try to convince you that there's a whole other narrative that should keep this from collapsing, right? That's not to say I'm, you know, the expert in someone's life, but I, I think that they should be a better uh, expert in their life. My method involves stabbing and making them cry, right? Well, sort of. It involves getting them to cry sometimes. Um, because I think that Suleta is in the intellectualizing zone here, like for sure, right? This is the, the positive. Let's not make that a red. This is the this is the the good zone, right? And and Soleta is like definitely she's intellectualizing this stuff because she went too high last episode and now she's like gonna try to keep herself down here, intellectualizing everything. And and here she's rationalizing why she actually doesn't even need this thing. You know, now that I don't have any of these things, it doesn't matter that I don't have this hope. And I and because I don't have that, my self-confidence doesn't matter. I'm not a good person. I'm only capable of making mistakes. And so I can't be a good judge of moral character. Like she's she's allowing, because she's down here, herself to intellectualize away all of these other critical faculties that would keep this schema intact. And so like when you're doing therapy with someone, it's about like trying to understand how someone has created this like web, you know, this naughty sort of web that's like very unhealthy thinking for them and, and trying to uplift them. Like, yeah, I'm going to confront you. I'm going to make you cry. I want you to like be here, right? Because what I'm trying to do is get you to believe that this thing is still possible and that you're probably disfavoring part of the narrative that could convince you that this is still here. You know, I guarantee that there's a lot of people who feel this way when when they get set back in some area where they fail a test or, you know, they lose a friend or they go through a breakup. Breakups are huge because that's exactly what's happening here. Like when I've gone through breakups, it not only makes me not feel like, you know, I was a good partner to that relationship. It, it cascades and waterfalls on like everything else starts convincing you that you're like not good enough in all kinds of areas you know that the the world is lonely that it's unfair that others are untrustworthy that they are shallow that being alone is better 
that you know i i must deserve this because it's a mistake everything is a mistake right like one one truly catastrophic schema breaking suddenly creates this whole other stack of issues and she really needs encouragement to see that like let's not commit these to the law of understanding about ourselves too early because we're going to end up becoming depressed right De depression comes from feeling this right when you don't have any hope and you have this despair and despair makes it feel like that because it makes it feel like none of these other things are not only not possible of being redeemed but not worth it because if I, sure, I could get close with someone again, and what? They could just break my heart again. And, and we just become desensitized to growth or avoidant of growth because it's a lot of work to try to start undoing this stuff. The other thing about depression that makes it very hard to deal with is that it infects everything else in your life, right? Let's say that the cause of Suleta's current mood is this breakup, right? If this is the cause of her, you know, her mood, let's call this the mood slash depression, this is going to impact a lot of things. It's going to impact her physical health and her mental health. Physical health changes, right? Often it can be uh, diet changes. Like we've just seen her kind of, you know, doing while she's eating with her friends. Potentially overeating or undereating. For a lot of people, it's undereating. You know, they lose their appetite. For a lot of people, it's overeating. They they need to cope with it, and that's how they do it. It's going to impact her mental health. It's going to impact like her um, willingness to socialize, right? Her self concept, like her self esteem. And the problem is that these are not just contained to you because these then infect other things, right? These end up spreading to others' physical health and mental health, right? Because let's say that your your willing your lack of willingness to socialize starts impacting your friend groups. Let's say you you know you piss someone off right? It could impact your family. It could, um, you know, lead others to start like, I don't know, making compromises for you because they feel bad. The point is that it, it's going to work its way down to other things in your life and in other people's lives, right? This could damage their friendships. This could damage the family dynamics. And the problem is that let's say this suddenly gets resolved. Let's say that suddenly they get back together. Okay, that's great. The source of your depression is fixed, but that doesn't suddenly fix all the damage that it's done in these other areas, right? It's become a poison that has worked its way down and infected other areas of life and, and just, you know, resolving the open wound does not get the poison out like you you may have already done irreparable damage to other areas of your life or other areas of your health and so that's that's why it's such a complicated sort of thing to deal with in mental health it's not just about solving the problem right the breakup oh let's get you back in that relationship or let's get you back out there and find someone new no like this is this has impacted her um you know ability to 
work on teams, most likely, you know, to duel. Like it's it's gonna impact other people in in very negative ways in the same way it's gonna impact you. So I think that Suleta needs more than just getting back together with Miodine. She really needs to resolve some of those like deeper issues, those psychological schemas that are there from mom. Oh my god, is she gonna get punched? <laughs> See, it's already starting to affect other people. Like, just going out of her way. ちょ、ちょっと待って。みんなも行くの?そうだスタッフは必要。怪我まだ治ってないんだろ?誰もいないよ。また Hey yo, she's like me. <laughs> this is I, okay. I'm not gonna flick my clients, and I wouldn't be as like direct. But she has the same idea as I do, where I'm like, no, you're wrong. It's wrong to pretend that this is not a problem for you, and and you're wrong because you're favoring a limited narrative about what's really going on with you psychologically. <laughs> Choo Choo is the MVP. She's giving that aggressive therapist vibes. She was the best girl all along. <laughs> well, that's what comes next, is if Miorine doesn't welcome Suleta back, she's going to get fucking punched. さっき中東区寮のやつらから礼言われてニカネの気持ちちょっと分かった気がしたんだよね通学で行ってくら彼らが来てもめちゃするなよ何書いてるのさあなたに教える必要が警戒してる where do they think Nika is at right now? Do they think she's fled? グラスレーとフォルドの夜明けが繋がってたなんて他の誰にも話してないからさこう見えて結構口硬いんだよねあのエランさんですよねその前とは全然別人だよえ君たちが知ってるエランキレスとはそう最高峰俺を指名してくれ
素直になろうよ命の安い者同士さ全てですかああリストにある施設のデューデリジェンスを急いでくれ適正価格とかけ離れすぎでは父さんの命には変えられない指定された地球企業が最優先だグループの事業上等順調ね社内にこの状況を疑う人間はいないよ議会連合に報告しておくわ先手を取られたな。Hey yo, who's that? <笑>複数の指示を集めているようですね。シャディクが動くことは想定できた。でもペイルと組むなんて。ヒントになるかわかりませんけど。Man, dark like navy is fucking Miyadine's color. It's a, it's a look. 少しはデモによる抗議活動と見られていましたが、アーシアン側の武装集団がベネリット関連施設を襲撃。重火器の使用も確認されており、両陣営に達。一連のテロに関する企業統治の欠如を責めるものです。犯人捜索の名目で、不当な治安活動を強いていましたから。あいつらの怒りは、暴力者止められない。だったら、私たちで止めてみるのはどう何デモ側と直接対話する。うまく収めれば実績にもなるでしょう。地球に行くつもりか当たり前じゃない。相手は武装ゴー。こちらも武力を示さなければ、対等な交渉は成立しませんよ。You realize now that I don't need to say anything because you have the power. You have the ability, guys. <laughs> you now have the ability to. to... Yeah, hands. hands! Show me the hands! hands. <laughs> Change! <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. That's what we've got. This is the definition of a parataxic distortion. Ooh, going with the old classic. <laughs> we've got agents of change! <laughs> yeah, hands! <laughs> We've got hands, people. We've got agents of change. Have you ever known anyone in your life to be that excited by seeing someone look at their hands? I think I'm the only one at this point. <laughs> the intimidator. The この交渉で示してみせれば私と株式会社ガンダムはこれからのベネリットグループは戦いじゃなく命を救うんだって I'm sure that will go exactly according to plan クイーンハーバーの暴動を収めるつもりだしスラティフィケーショングエル先輩苦学して即無駄な脱却今度は地球だって最初からあの Listen to all these boys hyping fucking Bob up. Chia boy. Zero G fucking escalators are so cool. Dakte, O see the good as I must. Dotire, Nana Ju, Hachiban Hanga, this. So Nabango. あなた方申請者がプラントクエタでいつも申請する場所ですよ。ちょっとお話ししませんか？僕は仲間が罪を犯してると知って通報しました。罪は罪です。僕は領長として仲間を守りたかった。What is happening here？ そしたこと正しいですよね？え？あんたとんだ裏切り野郎だね。Best girl confessionals. I was like, yeah, is that a is that little Haku robot like a a, a therapist? Is that a space therapist? Oh, the Haro counselor, yeah. Haro, oh man, this is a dark future where Haro is the fucking therapist. 
<laughs> Cecilia. Yeah. <laughs> they took my job, I know. Proof that having therapists around wouldn't have solved this problem, at least. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'd confess basically anything to Cecilia at this point. <laughs> I can only imagine. Ah, oh, those, those non-Cecilia fan arts, those disgusting fan arts. Where would someone post such a thing? Like, what kind of sicko would would seek that out and where would they find them <laughs> rogpt yeah those disgusting cecilia fan arts which ones though where would i where would someone find them to so i know how to avoid them hi <laughs> Oh, go ahead. You bonk the whole internet if you need to bonk me. <laughs> if I never want to find them, I definitely shouldn't check PixIV. Okay. とりあえず申請しましょうか。レッタが来てる。いかがなさいますか。ヘリ。頑張れよ。でもなんでノーマルスーツ？そう。That's why I'm saying I don't want to find them. I want to avoid them at all costs, Rectus. Creepy Ariel. Oh, I know, I thought it was I ミオリネさんにいらないって言われて。うん。仕方ないの。約束私が破ったから。なんだよ。お母さんの言う通り。でも分かんないの。フォルダじゃなくなって決闘しなくてよくなって。みんなと勉強して一緒にランチも食べてお
エリーの体エリーの手足エリーの拡張意識それが私たちカブンの子どういうこと代わりって君たちは僕の遺伝子から作られたリプリチャイルドってことだよ17年前にお母さんが覚えてないのでももう大丈夫クワイエットゼロがエリーの居場所作ってくれるだからスリッパはもういらないの Oh no. No. <laughs> <laughs> わ<笑><笑>かったスコアエイトなら僕は自分の意思で動けるほら必要ないんだだから君はこれ以上すがっちゃいけない僕にもお母さんにも。Oh my god, they just ejected her? <gasps> Something about this doesn't add up to me. Jeez. Chat saying I'm destroyed. I feel completely vindicated. Just you wait until I fucking analyze this in a few seconds. You're all going to be wrong. <laughs> いいのエリーあの子も一緒に行くことだってそうねスレッタは自由に生きていいのよね Oh my god I shall let this play out before I tell you all how right I am. <laughs> wait, wait until this is over. I will tell you how good this outcome is for s u l e t s a This is good for s u l e t s a Okay. To those of you who said Brady destroyed, <laughs> I, I have always told you guys, I cannot. Predict the plot very well. I can't predict the plot very well. Okay, I got it wrong that she actually is a, a clone. But what I was getting at with that idea is correct, which is that the, what, will, what it will take for Suleta to truly unwind this、um, knot of brainwash is for this schema to be severed. The schema of mother is always right, and as long as I can trust my mom because she is my mother, then everything is fine and I can justify all of these things, right? That's essentially what、um, she was getting at. I was not incorrect that, that she's not her mother, though. Like, I, I was only incorrect about her being like a kidnapped baby. Prospera is not Suleta's mother. If she's a clone of a r i how does that make Prospera her mother? Like, in all ways practical, 
she's not her mother in, in that sense, right? She's, she's her mother in only the sense that she raised her, which is not really what Suleta is thinking of as mother, right? What is so shattering about this is that, like, genetically, you know, she she's not, like, the actual birth child of Prospera. She's a clone of Aerie, so she doesn't have a mother. And so when I talked about, like, what is going on with Suleta and why... Why this idea that I can trust mom and as long as I can trust mom, everything is fine. The reason this overrides everything is because this is like the foundational schema at the core of Suleta's belief and a maladaptive schema, right? Maladaptive schemas are core beliefs about things that developed in a very negative way. And what is essentially going on here is, you know, she she developed this schema that I can always trust my mother. My mother will always be right. And that means that anything that's like set above this stack, like, you know, I'm in love with Miodine. You know, she's someone I, I want to be with. And love is important to me. That's a core belief that's under that. And love is important because being alone is is scary, right? And, you know, if I'm 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 afraid to be alone because that means I'll be unhappy, I'll feel small, I'll be forgotten. And if I'm forgotten, then my morality doesn't matter. Like this this stack of schemas works all the way up. And so when you're dealing with someone who has a maladaptive schema, you question why they would give up something like this when that doesn't seem rational. And it's because at the bottom layer there's something that prevents them from thinking rationally about what's at the top. And this principle will just override everything, no matter what, right? And I said that, like, my prediction was that what it will take for Suleta to heal from this is for this maladaptive schema to suddenly not be true. That if she's not my mom and I can't trust her, then suddenly this foundational core belief will not override everything else that's above it. So yes, I was incorrect that I, I thought that th this was going the, in the direction of she was like a stolen baby that had like Ares likeness. But it turns out she's a clone. However, the emotional arc and the character experience was exactly straight on, right? Like what I what I said was that she's gonna discover she's not her mom and that she can't trust her. And now her her priorities of schemas can be balanced out. This is a this is a total uh, vindicating W for Suleta. <laughs> this is a good episode for Suleta because now she can experience. An appropriate level of ooh, crisis. <laughs> I'm not coping. This isn't copium. This is psychology. This is this is good stuff. You know, on this graph. Maybe some of you are sick of seeing this by now, but I've always said that being in in a in a crisis is actually good for someone. Right, crisis being up here. This is your anxiety, and and this is like over time, and this is intellectualizing. It's so much better for someone to have their anxiety go up to the point of crisis because here they're actually doing psychological work in this zone. And they can do things like overcome a maladaptive schema that is so set in. Because if they're not doing that and they're, you know, be able to intellectualize all of their problems, then they'll never enter this zone of psychological work. So you actually need them to go up here because then they've at least crossed this point over. And then they have to learn how to self-regulate that, right? That's why I say that, yes, it's my goal in therapy to make someone cry, essentially, is because, like... 
I don't want to do a session where someone is just intellectualizing all of their problems and is, um, you know, quite easily able to just talk about what's going on and say, yeah, I'm totally over Miodine. There's nothing wrong going on right now, right? She needs something that's going to push her in this direction. And it's better if it goes too far and then can be brought back down into this psychological work zone. That's why I say that this is a W for Suleta. Suleta W. Character development W. Yeah. This is the good kind of trauma. Prospera is still her mother figure at the very least. Suleta may not be her birth daughter, but they are still family to an extent. Well, but that's that's how schemas work, right? Is they can be very confusing and overlapping, right? The idea of mother as a schema, right? A schema is a is a package of ideas that you have about things, right? And they can be very concrete, like, um, you know, I don't know what's what's like a pretty concrete schema, like um, pianos sound nice. Okay, that's a pretty like common held belief, right? Something we can all agree on. Pianos sound pretty nice. But they can be very subjective too, which is like, you know, uh, sunny days are happy days, or maybe someone thinks that gloomy days are happy days, right? And our schemas can differ on that. And you can have a schema about something pretty concrete, like what a mother is. And, you know, mother is someone who raised me and birthed me, right? And the fact that these are connected means that if one of them is not true, we start to question the other one. Because you could very easily say, yeah, but she still raised her. She's still a mother figure. But schemas are dynamic and they, they become attached to each other. And so that's kind of what I was getting at before is like when one thing at the bottom of the stack gets disrupted, it challenges all of the other ones. And so even though... Suleta can understand that, yes, Prospera raised her. The fact that she's not her biological mother makes her question whether this is valid. It goes the same way when she's like, you know, was I really in love with Miodine now that I'm not the groom? Because realistically, yeah, you, sh you should be able to say that about Miodine, she has a schema that I was her groom and, and we had a strong bond. Right? And the fact that this one is no longer true makes her question this one because they are connected that way, that way. Rationally, she should be able to see that they have the same bond they've always had. And, and like, but that's not how psychology works. When one of your major schemas gets disrupted, it has you question all of the other ones. It has you question, like, were we ever good friends? Did she ever really want me around? Was I ever, you know, um, as useful as I thought I was. You go through breakup and, and suddenly you start to question those things and you invalidate all of these experiences that tell you, yeah, you did have a bond at some point. So that's why I say it doesn't actually matter if Suleta recognizes that Prospera gave, uh, didn't give birth to her, but raised her. The way schemas work is that this is suddenly in question. Does she really count as my mom? when this condition of what a mother should be isn't met. And that cascade is actually a good one in this sense because that's going to start unwinding all of these other things and free her up from the maladaptive schema. Right, but Prospera has constantly lied and used Suleta in ways she never did to a Airy. So another lie from Prospera might give rise to Suleta questioning everything she knows. Well, that's... That's the problem is, is now Suleta needs someone to guide her to a positive conclusion about this. And that's not going to be easy because she's, she's currently in the crisis, right? She's not in the W zone right now. She's not here. She's all the way up here. And what she needs is someone 
maybe har- the Haro therapist bot to help her understand what's just happened and why this is a good thing for her, right? And that will be her move to move forward gain too. Move forward, you gain a crisis and a healing. That's what you get. So yeah, overall, I would say that this is a is actually a pretty good outcome for everyone involved. Brady's adopting Prospero's teaching overall. No, no, I I think that this is actually good for Suleta on a broad scale. But yeah, right right now, what she needs is someone to help her come down here and do some of the psychological work. The danger is if she just keeps ascending and ascending and ascending in this area and just ends up in a complete crisis. This is where she'll need her friends and she'll need uh, her Haro therapist bot. There needs to be a safe environment. Yeah, well, that's that's why like when you do this in therapy, you know, I have lots of techniques and training to like know how to push someone just enough, right? To just sit in here. But sometimes it's it's too much. And then if they're up here, I have some ways to help them get back down to here. And then by the end, you know, I want them to have no anxiety, right? So like she's gonna need some help. Just being here isn't good enough. She needs that that regulation now. And does the vacuum of space be considered a safe environment? Probably not. I'm going to say that's a no. I'm going to say that's not a safe environment. <laughs> but what an episode. I have said before, I plot is not my forte with storytelling. I I sometimes come up with the wrong kinds of predictions when it comes to like the pieces of the story and how they're going to shake out. But I feel like I was actually very right about the psychological prediction and what this is going to mean for her um, changing her perspective on things. I guess we'll find out when we watch the next episode. But thank you for enjoying this one. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens next.